Okay, so I'm gonna call CQ here with my memory. The memory key on this is very handy because you actually have a total of eight positions that you can put on here. So what I'm going to do now is press and hold the memory keyer, and then what that does is it repeats the CQ over and over again until I hit the key or do something to interrupt it. I need to change the spacing on that. I should leave a little bit more room in between each one of those CQs. In fact, let me turn that off. Let's see if I can do this. I haven't done this before, but I'm assuming I can press the edit set. Um, and maybe it's under edit here. Nope, that's for labeling. And uh, let's look here and see. CW key set. Key w, okay, repeat time. Yeah, it's down to two seconds. We're gonna make that probably five seconds. That'll make it a little more friendly for people to get their call sign in. This is Parks on the Air, it's not a contest. Uh, so contesters would leave much shorter period of time in between CQs. In this case though, five seconds gives people a time to respond back. Cause a lot of people are using straight keys and bugs and everything and it just takes them a little while longer to get around to um, sending their call. And I've already worked about five stations um, here on my notepad. I just thought I'd do this video to show sort of how, you know, well the ICOM IC705 works with CW contacts. These are uh, just a lifesaver <laughs> when you're in the field. I've got a memory programmed with CQ that's sending right now. I actually have one, uh, you know, telling people good afternoon and their signal report if they're 599. I actually rarely use that. I tend to just send it by hand. And then I have the... Uh, one telling them um, uh, seven threes, thank you for the contact, and I give my call sign. And uh, that's sort of as a final. I like having that because uh, it gives me time to do things like write in my log and actually log in on my computer if I've got my, my uh, tablet with me so I can get the, um, the call sign in there and everything. Because frankly, I'm not good at multitasking. And Okay, let's see, I missed that. That's probably a little generous signal report for him. They're in Indiana. Okay. Now I'm logging with my other hand here. Now I call CQ again. I said this in another video, but even if I'm bringing my tablet with me, I always write down call signs and I start to put, I put the time down at certain intervals uh, just to make sure that I've got an extra copy of my log if I need it because tablets and laptops and things like that can fail. Tell you what we may do, we may move up to the, um, let's move up to the 30 meter band. 
see, I'm gonna move it here to 30 meters. I hope you can see all this. This is usually my calling frequency uh, when I'm doing parks on the air. I tend to use the same frequencies over and over again. Um, my friends know where I'll be if I happen to be on the air and uh, it just tends to work out really well. Um, as I stated in a previous video, the ICOM IC705 does not have an internal uh, antenna tuner, uh, which was actually a little surprising because this is such a state-of-the-art radio. I mean, it has everything you can possibly imagine in it. I really do like this radio a lot. It's a little surprised they didn't put an ATU in, but hey, you know, it's all right. Uh, most of the time I operate in the field, I use resonant antennas, so I wouldn't really have to have an ATU. But I tend to use an ATU even if I'm using a resonant antenna because sometimes I want to go off of the bands that those antennas are resonant on. And uh, in this case, I'm using a random wire antenna uh, made by uh, Chameleon uh, called the MCOM3 Portable, which I really highly recommend. It's a random wire antenna, so it always needs a tuner. Um, the uh, Elecraft T1 is a great QRP tuner. I think it works up to maybe uh, 20 watts. Yeah, 20 watts max. And um, all this is putting out right now is five watts of power because I'm using the, um, the battery pack on the back of this. So I haven't tuned up on this band. In fact, I've uh, not tuned up on it at all since I've uh, put the battery in this T1. So let's see how well it'll tune up. Um, I'm just gonna send a string of dashes. Obviously, there's no one on the frequency right now. Actually, what I may do is send QRL while I'm tuning. And with the T1, it doesn't have a direct connection with the um, 705, like it doesn't use the command uh, cable or whatever you call it. Uh, so you manually tell it when to tune, and you just push and hold this, and then you send. I'll send it one more time here. And I can tell by looking at the SWR meter, it's already found a match that's probably about a 1.4 to one. I mean, that's really good. I may go ahead and uh, try one more time. Now it got a one-to-one -one match. Okay, good. So now we're tuned up, we're on frequency, and I'm going to send my CQ. And hopefully the reverse beacon network will pick me up. And one thing I always try to remember to do on my logs is mark what band I was on. When I switch bands, even if I don't get a single contact on that band, I like to know when I switch bands so that if I have to put my logs in again because you know, my computer failed or something, then I know what band I was on when I worked someone. Let's see if we catch anybody here. Sorry, this is kind of a slow TV thing. Um, it's real life. I'm not going to edit this at all. We'll see if I can get anybody. Propagation today is not wonderful above 40 meters. So far I've worked a total of six contacts on 40 meters. I'm here at Lake James State Park, uh, sort of north of Charlotte, North Carolina. And um, yeah, typically this time of day, I'm still able to make contacts on 30 and 20 meters. We'll see if the network's picked me up yet. Yes, it has. I'm gonna move the uh, camera here for a second. see. I wasn't paying attention. New Hampshire, so I'm gonna send him my pre-formatted thank you and seven threes.
I'm still not wonderful at CW, <laughs> as you can tell. Okay, let's send CQ again. And then log this guy. N5PU. Again, this may be really boring to some of you uh, doing such a long format video like this, but I wanted to show what it's really like doing a park activation. Um, it's not always pileups and things like that. Uh, sometimes you're kind of waiting and hunting uh, for your own, or you know, it's like fishing. Uh, you don't know what's out there. Sometimes you catch stuff. I will say I love this paddle. Uh, this was sent to me. It's a new paddle that um, C.W. Morris is making. They wanted me to give it a try and. Uh, I'm very, very pleased with it. Um, it works wonderfully, and I find that even using it in the field now, I won't be able to talk while I send. <laughs> well, I messed that up then. Like I said, I'm not the best CW operator. I'm gonna have it call CW for me, or CQ for me. So when I say I'm not the best CW operator, I have known CW now for probably 10 years. Um, and uh, there was a long period of time, maybe for, um, I don't know, seven years where I was barely using it at all. I mean, just using it really to test radios and stuff, um, not really using it in the field or anything. But I found this year doing parks on the air activations, it's so incredibly important that you have, um, that you're spotted on the POTA network, which here I'll show you. Uh, these are the spots. And actually that's my call sign right there. K4SWL, Lake Norman State Park. And you'll look here and it says RBN. Well, when you're doing CW, the reverse beacon network can pick you up and uh, the POTA website auto spots you. Same thing happens with uh, SOTA, with Summits on the Air. There's a, an auto spotting network. I had gone out um, to a couple of different very remote sites to do contacts before I was doing CW activations. And uh, I had traveled out there for, you know, two hours and get there and I couldn't, I had no cell phone service. I couldn't auto spot myself um, on the network. Like I, I have internet service here, but that's actually fairly rare. And uh, so it's really nice to have um, CW as a tool uh, and, or a skill really, uh, because it affords you the auto spotting via the reverse beacon network, which means that you'll almost always make your activation. You'll get your 10 that you need. And um, that's the reason I like using CW so much. Plus I find it's a very easy um, mode to use in the field. Here in a minute though, I'm gonna switch to single sideband and spot myself. Before I do that though, I am going to move down to the 80 meter band. Let's see here, I'm way off. Let me just do this. Oops. Okay, I may tune up here. Let's wait for a little bit and see if anybody's there. I do not hop on a frequency and immediately tune up. I hate it when people do that because quite often I'm listening to a station and someone may not hear that station um, contacting me. 
and someone will just start tuning up on top of me with a string of dots or something. So I listen for a while to try to determine if the frequency is clear. Then I actually ask if it's clear. And when I ask if it's clear, I try to actually tune up at the same time. So I'm going to press my tune button here again on the T1. And see, I'm still getting a high SWR. I'm not hearing anybody, so I'm gonna actually tune now. Press this, send a string of dashes, let it sort out the, um, the match. There. I've got an almost one-to-one -one match there. Uh, this is a great tuner, and this is actually a really great uh, antenna to the Chameleon Encom 3. You can't tell, but I've actually got the line going way up into a tree, and the uh, resonator is going out that way, but it tunes up anything from 160 to uh, 6 meters. So let's call here on 80 meters, and what I'll do is flip over here to the Parks on the Air website, and let's see how quickly it spots me on 80 meters. Hopefully you can see that a little bit. This auto refreshes. So I've been calling CQ now, what, twice? I'm gonna refresh it anyway. Let's see how quickly it can find me. Let's see, I'm still down here. It still thinks I'm on 30. And it's already figured out that I'm on 80 meters. That's how quickly the RBN works. <laughs> it's amazing. It's like a secret weapon for POTA operators. If you can just learn enough CW like I have in order to make contacts, I'm not a great CW op, but I know enough to answer calls and um, work little small pileups. Uh, don't be afraid. You've heard me in this video send a question mark. Um, if I don't hear something quite correctly, I'm not sure I copied it correctly, I send a question mark and have them send it again. Okay. I wasn't positive of his uh, WTARIF. He sounded like five seven nine when I was 